Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Friday, June 9th, and we are here answering financial questions, digging out of our inbox, which always feels quite uh, exciting and wonderful to me. Although Mark notified me and said that we still have thousands of emails to go. Okay, we're going to do our best. If you've got a financial question, just go to the website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, let us know if you would be willing to come on the air. Also on the website, you can buy my book. It's called The Great Money Reset. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. You didn't think that just came out of nowhere, gang. I'm very happy that so many of you have purchased the book and I really appreciate it, but I need many, many more people to satisfy the publisher's needs. I mean, I get it. They just want me to keep talking about it. So I'm going to keep talking about it. Anyway, it's a great book and I really loved writing it and I really appreciated all of you sharing your stories that helped become this book. And if you are considering some big change in your life, it doesn't have to be a financial matter, but sometimes the changes we make create financial implications. So check it out. The Great Money Reset, it's there for you. You can also subscribe to our new service. It's called Jill on Money Live. And this weekend, we're going to have a little snippet, right, Mark? We're going to have snippet of uh, who's coming out from behind the paywall for the weekend. This weekend will be Gina Smilek. Gina Smilek, New York Times Federal Reserve and economics writer. She's awesome. She wrote a huge book. It's going to be a big Fed week next week. So this is an excellent time for you to check her out. So we'll have a little teaser about that over the weekend. All right. So let us do some emails. We're going to start with Craig. Hi, Jill and Mark. I enjoy your podcast. I've been listening for about a month now. I love the new people, Mark. This is good. And uh, Craig wants to have another set of eyes on their financial picture, would appreciate insight on the situation. Okay. My wife is 43. She makes $103,000. I'm 42 and I earn $125,000. She's in education. She'll have a pension at age 60. $55,000. That's a lot. She will be retiring or at least planning to at age 60. She has a 403B, but there's no match, no Roth option in her plan. So now we are debating halting her contributions due to the high fees in the plan. The question from Craig is, should they divert their money somewhere else, lower fees? She contributes $850 a month to her 403B, and she gets a medical subsidy to cover medical benefits up until Medicare age at 65. Okay. Craig has a 401k Roth option. He does 10% traditional, 6% to the Roth. He gets a 50% match on the first 3% and 25% match on the next 3%. Hmm. We have two boys, ages 16 and 13, $23,000 and $18,000 in 529 counts. Plan is for both to attend state colleges They owe $96,000 on their mortgage, and that's a 15-year fixed, and the house is worth $350. We are looking to move up in home in the next year or so. I don't like that part of it. Now, all of a sudden, my plan got harder. Okay. They have an auto loan at 3%. Term life insurance, a million bucks each. $125,000 in the Roth and another $400,000 in rollovers and existing 401ks and 403bs. HSA, 15 grand. Small emergency fund, $15,000. Expenses, $7,500 a month. Social Security puts us at uh, $2,300 a month at 62, although we would not tell you to do 62. Okay, Um, We live comfortably. We anticipate needing $12,000 a month in retirement, and I'm torn on paying off the car loan, opening and contributing to a brokerage account, beefing up our emergency fund, or funding the 529 account or some combination. Okay. So let's just go back here. At age 60, she is going to have $55,000 of income, right? Mark, if I were to maybe, let's see. Let's pretend that I can convince them to not draw Social Security at 62, but instead to make it 67. What's the right amount that you think I should put in there? What's my holding level mark at 67? Mm, 28. 2,800. All right. So it looks to me like they get pretty close. They got a nice income, by the way, because 
they have the 60, they'll have social security, right? They'll, they'll have basically 67,000 and 55,000, both with inflation riders. So that will give them $122,000 of gross income. So we need to produce from their accounts about $4,000 a month. That's what I would say. All right, Mark, I would do all Roth for him, right? No doubt. He should be doing all Roth. Forget the split. Okay, so let's do, first of all, first and foremost, all Roth. Then I guess the other question is, so we have 17 years. If we take that 850 bucks a month and we have the the various to-dos, right, I wouldn't pay off the car loan. It's fine. They could beef up their emergency reserve fund, put money into a 529 account or and contribute to a brokerage account out of the 850. I think their their emergency fund is pretty light. I'm not sure about why that's so light. Also, why is there why are they saying that they have expenses of 7500 and then will need 12,000 a month? That's a huge jump. Like where did that 4500 bucks come from, Craig? All right. Out of the 850, I think that first and foremost, let's beef up your emergency reserve. And, you know, if you've got $7,500 a month, you got two months that's set aside. We at least want six months, right? So at the very, very least, you know, for the next six months, just put the 850 bucks into the emergency reserve fund. Now, let's presume he's got the emergency reserve fund. Do you want to do half in the, in the 529 mark and half in brokerage? Or do you want to do all, like, what do you think? I mean, I don't know if they're doing any contributions to the 529s right now, and this would just be increasing those contributions, but I'm kind of leaning towards using a brokerage account. I mean, I don't see any reason why she should be using the 403B. It's a bad plan. There's no Roth option. So yeah, I I wouldn't use it at all. But if she's not going to use the 403B, then I think it should all be going into a brokerage account. Here's the other part. I think you have to do... um, You have to put money in the brokerage account. I am not clear about what this move up in your home is really going to be. And I will say this, if you have this mortgage with seven and a half years left and you said, we are looking to move up in home in the next year or so, that means your expenses are going to go up and you might need part of that 850 to pay for your increased expenses. So we need to know a little bit more about the house. I think that the house is going to be a big factor in this. I think you're on the right track of the 850. I think that if you're not putting anything into the 529 plan, I would say put 250 in the 529 and 600 in the brokerage. How about that? Make it easy. And if you are putting some money in, maybe it all goes in brokerage and I need to understand, and I think you guys need to understand how much of a move up are we discussing? You're going to be fine in retirement. That pension is amazing. You're going to be fine. But I will say it is very important that you don't go too crazy on the house because I think that could blow things up. All right. I got Marsha who's up next. She says, I've been, Mark, this is like the new listener um, uh, episode. Uh, Marsha says, I've been listening to your podcast for a few weeks now. And it's been obvious that my finances are shaky, but I'm aghast at just how poorly I'm set up for retirement. If I didn't make bad decisions and someone else made them for me and I've never asked for help or advice, good heavens, no. So here I am. It's not pretty. Listen, Marsha, I like them. I like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, Marsha is 72. She's semi-retired. She's got good health. All right. She's got an annuity, which rolled out of a 401k, $47,000. Okay. She says some, there are some zeros missing, possibly. 401k, 12 grand. Stock, 15,000. Oh my God. The, here's the big number. The property, one and a half to $2 million, three cabins, which produces rental income of 5850. Cash on hand, 15,000. Part-time employment, twenty thousand, and social security of nineteen hundred. So nineteen hundred. Okay, I'm just I'm making some notes here, gang. The mortgage is sixty four hundred dollars a month. Holy smokes! It uh, will be paid off in twenty thirty four. The mortgage is horrible. There's six. It's six percent with no re- way to, no way to refinance, no personal debt. Two grown kids that are 
on their way with their own careers and businesses. Uh, okay, she's got just enough to make bills with few frills. She's not adding to savings. The scenario works if I continue working until the mortgage is paid off, as long as nothing goes wrong. All I see is vulnerability. I could sell the property and get more than Zillow estimated value, but I love it out here and I hesitate to sell my only assets. I have a partner, generous and amazing with travel. We live together, but though separately he's set up financially. He owns a house nearby. No interest in selling his property and moving here full time. Any ideas how to mitigate my vulnerability? Rabbits, hats, what do you got? Okay, Marsha. First thing I thought about, Mark, was blowing up Marsha's beautiful dream. I want that money. So this mortgage is eight fifty now. What do you think her expenses actually are? In a you know, like that's one thing she doesn't add here in the in the picture, right? Because we have the we have the income from the rental. We have social security and then we have her part-time income, right? So let's call it 1500 a month, which is about 9250 a month. I mean, she's, she's so real estate rich and it's forcing her to live on, which is essentially like 2,900 bucks a month. I feel like this is a long, she's 72. Okay. Is it possible to sell one of the cabins? I feel like it's a long time to until 2034, you know? It's like, that's a long time. You got to work until you're 82 years old. Here's what I would do. I would keep going and doing what you're doing right now. But at the same time, I would have a parallel path where you are really talking to people about whether you can sell this. And also, would you move in with your significant other? even though you're living separately now, he is set up financially and he owns his home. And so maybe you'd want to go move in with him. Can you shack up with him? I mean, here's the thing. If you can make a little bit more part-time income, that's great. But in the next few years, you're probably going to have to make a decision about whether or not you want to pull the trigger and sell it. And then you've got to have a game plan. What would you, where would you go, right? Because obviously right now, if she sold it, we do have a lot of squish room, Mark, because she she's not paying $6,000 a month to live somewhere. I, I think I would keep doing what I'm doing, but I would also, at the same time, pursue a parallel track of really thinking about what would it mean if I sold this property and where would I go and how much would it cost me? Because right now you got $6,300 of squish room if you didn't have that mortgage and you might feel a little less pressure that that, see real estate you better get a ton of joy out of it because it's creating a whole host of other issues oh mark 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 all right i think that's it and i think that for all of you these are some interesting questions they're very intense and big picture I would also ask you if, if you are willing to come on the air, especially with big situations where, you know, we have to really understand just how much do you love that real estate? For example, it's so great if you come on the air, because then I can ask those follow-up questions. And also listen, you know, sometimes we uncover different things, right? I'd love to help as many of you as possible and you should come on the air. So if you've got a question, go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button, check the box that you want to come on the air with us. Check out all of our free content, podcasts, blog, radio show, videos, the book section, the resources. I mean, the book, you have to pay money, but you give a little snippet. You can always subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your favorite podcast and spread the word. We love having new people listening. It's very exciting. It is Friday. Let's do some business. Our music is composed by Joel Goodman. Karen Cranick is still our web queen, but soon to be exiting. Mark Talercio is the best executive producer in the world, and we are distributed by Cadence 13. If you wouldn't mind, could you please leave us a rating and review on Apple and do something nice for someone else today? Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.